The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Everybody hear me okay? And uh, see my screen okay as well? All right, I got at least a couple of yeses here. Uh, let me wait just another minute or two. Uh, since I just loaded this up, uh, people are still rolling in. Um, wait just another minute and let everybody get here, and then I will uh, go ahead and get started. I'm going to be going through uh, pulling up an actual WordPress site for you guys tonight and uh, showing you some web design uh, basics, both HTML and CSS, and uh, and then I'm also going to give you a quick little crash course in uh, PHP. I'm going to do all this in a in a way that's um, you know easy easy to understand and and also something that you guys can actually uh, turn around and and go and use on your websites. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this started, and uh, I will be recording this for you guys, so um, a recording should be available tomorrow, so you can go back and take a look at uh, anything that I've covered tonight if you happen to miss something. Um, I have a decent amount that I'm going to try to cover tonight, so, so I will probably try to move a little quickly through a few things here, um, but if you have any questions at any point, feel free to go ahead and uh, type them in, and uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, to get started with, um, I want to just show you some uh, HTML and CSS basics, uh, things that you can actually use in uh, your WordPress site. A lot of people will simply rely on the uh, standard uh, WordPress toolbar buttons that are up here to uh, do any custom uh, web design and styling that they're looking to do on their sites. Um, and a lot of people will simply just uh, create uh, an article and paste it into their website and, and really don't spend a lot of time to try to make their sites uh, look unique or to try to make them more useful uh, to website visitors. So that's really the main, the main purpose, the reason why I like to put in a little bit of extra work on my sites and uh, do, do a little bit of customization. Um, and so I'd like to try to pass a little bit of that knowledge on to you guys today. Um, the first thing I want to start with, just very basic, if you are not familiar uh, with HTML coding at all, um, there's two tabs up here in WordPress. There's a visual tab and there's a text tab. If you want to be doing any kind of uh, HTML, CSS, uh, or PHP coding, you need to make sure that you are in the text tab and not the visual tab, because in the visual tab, anything that you type in is simply going to be spit out on the screen. Uh, exactly how you type it. So if you go into the text tab here, you can see that a lot of your buttons up here have actually changed. Um, a good majority of these are really still the same things. They're just uh, more done in, a, in an HTML coding format because you'll actually see that HTML coding show up on your page if you click on something up here. Um, so First, I'm going to start by just showing you, uh, starting with, with something that is already built into the system here, and that's pretty basic, which is, uh, which is a link. Um, 
pretty much everybody uses links, and they're good to interlink the uh, the pages within your website together. Um, but what a lot of people will will simply not do is go beyond what WordPress uh, will allow you to do. As you can see here, uh, this is a standard HTML link that is printed out. Uh, the website address is right in here in between these quote tags. Um, and then this target specifies uh, where exactly uh, the visitor is going to be taken once they have clicked on the link. And then anything in between the tag right here, uh, this would be your text link right here. Um, a lot of times people will use tech li text links for uh, affiliate promotions, for example. And um, one of the most common things that I get asked is how you can take a link and prevent a search engine from following that link. Um, and that option is not available uh, in WordPress using any of the uh, default HTML options that are available here. Um, so all you have to do is type in the word rel, REL and simply put no follow into quotes. And when you hear people talking about uh, no follow text links, this is what they're referring to. It's just a simple little tag that you place into your text link and it prevents search engines from uh, proceeding through your links and uh, indexing the content that you are promoting there. Typically when you're promoting uh, something like an Amazon affiliate link, you always want to make sure that you have these tags uh, here within your links uh, so that the search engines are not realizing that you're promoting all the affiliate offers that you are promoting. Um, going beyond links, I'm going to get a little bit more uh, complex here. Um, one of the things that I like to do is to try to um, make my pages look a little more uh, creative, um, especially in, in the regards to being more than just simple uh, text on a page. Um, one of the ways that I will do this is to use an HTML tag called a div. Uh, it looks simply like this. It's three letters. Um, any HTML tag will typically have an opening and a closing, uh, less than and a greater than symbol surrounding it. Um, and then any content that is within the tag uh, simply goes in between it. So your content would be here. And then you simply close it off with another tag uh, of the same type. And as you can see, the closing tag and the opening tag are completely identical with one exception, and that is this forward slash right here. The forward slash indicates that it is a closing tag and not an opening tag. Um, now by itself, simply putting uh, some text within a div like I have shown you here it's really not going to do anything special. Um, when I open this up uh, on the live web page, as you can see, it's really nothing more than just the standard text stuck into the web page. So you might wonder what the what the purpose is in using this. Um, and, and the point is that you can actually customize uh, the way that this is used by using uh, CSS coding. Now, if you've never used CSS coding before, um, there's actually a couple of different ways that you can load CSS code into your site. Uh, you could do it through your theme, for example. There's often an area in uh, WordPress themes where you can enter in coding that goes in the header of the site, for example. Um, and that's one example of a place where you could put uh, CSS coding. But you can also do CSS coding inline um, and this is actually what I would say is, is the easiest way to do it, at least for people that are not comfortable with using CSS, um, because you don't have to keep flipping back and forth from one page to the next. You can simply uh, do all of your designing on one single page. Um, and, it, and it just makes it a lot easier in terms of organization and figuring out what is supposed to be happening uh, and where. So to use CSS coding uh, inline, all you do is you go into your opening tag here um, and you simply type in the word style. And then you're following it by an equal sign 
and two quote marks. Now anything that goes in between the two quote marks, this is CSS coding that is going to affect this specific uh, HTML tag. So now you really open up your possibilities in terms of what you can do with this particular HTML tag and the content uh, that is contained within it. Um, because CSS really uh, has tons of different options. If you're looking to do something specific with it, uh, just go to Google and type in CSS and then type in uh, you know, a couple of keyword phrases to go along with it. And you can typically find um, basic coding to do what you're looking for and simply copy and paste and change a couple of numbers around and uh, get exactly the looks that you're going for on your websites with a minimal amount of work and, and obviously the best part and the reason why I originally learned how to do all this stuff myself is, is to avoid uh, outsourcing. Um, all these simple little HTML web design tasks can, can really um, they may not be expensive on their own. They could be like fifty to a hundred dollars a pop, but they can they can quickly add up um, if you're doing them all the time. And over the course of a year, you can you can easily spend thousands of dollars uh, outsourcing this type of work uh, to other people. But it's really something that can be done uh, by yourself uh, pretty quickly and easily by just learning the basics and how to find uh, the information to do anything else that you might not already know. Um, so what I'm going to do is run through a few of the most commonly used uh, CSS tactics and um, codes and commands here and show you guys exactly how to do a few things that you can then take to your own websites um, and apply in any way that you see fit to you know, jazz up your sites a little bit and to make them a little more user friendly. Um, so to start with, since I just have a little bit of text here within my tag, um, I'm going to play around with the way that this text looks to start with. Um, as you can see, going back to the page over here, this is just standard text on the page. There's nothing special about it. Um, so what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to make this, uh, text be bold. And I do that by typing in the command font weight with a hyphen in between the two words. And uh, then you simply use a colon and use the word bold and end it off with a semicolon there. And by saving the changes on this and previewing them on your site, you can see that it makes the content bold. Now obviously there are some easier uh, ways that this can be done using HTML tags, as you can see this, um, the B right up here, it actually adds a strong tag around whatever you have selected. And this can really do the same effect. Um, but the difference here is that this, uh, this font weight has more than just one level to it. There are actually different uh, percentages of a font weight that you can use to use something in between a bold and a standard uh, font weight if, if you choose to. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is using uh, the command font size. Now font size should be pretty obvious. It's going to change the size of the font. You can easily use this to make uh, any bit of text on your page uh, larger than the rest of the text and make it stand out. Um, from other content that is on your page. And all you have to do is use the font size command with a hyphen in between the words again. And then you're using a number of pixels right here. As you can see, I've set this for 24 pixels. Uh, this can be any number that you want to. A standard font size is typically around the 14 to 16 neighborhood. So anything smaller than that, and you're going to be dealing with um, you know, obviously much smaller font sizes and smaller text. And if you go above that number, then you're going to be dealing with much larger text. You will typically never have a need for anything much above um, the 
40 to 50 neighborhood, and even then that's, that's kind of stretching it. 40 to 50 pixel text is quite large. So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, just as an example here what the uh, font size of 24 pixels will look like. You can see it's considerably larger than the previous font size that I was using. Um, the next command that I'm going to go on to um, is actually going to be to change the color of the font. Now all you have to use is the command color, but then the tricky part is what comes after that. Uh, the next part that you're going to be using is actually what's known as a hex color code. Now a hex color code um, starts with a number symbol right here, and then it is followed by a series of six letters and or numbers, and then closed off with a semicolon again. Now, you might be wondering, how in the world do I find these uh, hex color codes? It's actually pretty simple. You can just go to Google and type in hex color picker. Uh, the site that comes up up top here, I recommend it. It's easy to use. All you have to do is uh, over here on the right-hand side, select this to change the uh the hue of your color here and you simply pick the color that you want and then you select your six uh, character code up at the top here and paste it into your website. So this will change the, uh, the color of your font. As you can see, mine went to red. I was using the hex color code FF0000. All zeros, uh, six zeros is black, and six Fs is white. Um, and then you have uh, a large combination of letters and numbers that are used to come up with the different combinations in between. But just a couple, couple of simple ones, uh, as you can see here, putting two Fs and then four zeros gives you red. If you switch the Fs to the end of it, instead of at the beginning of it like this, uh, then this will give you blue. Um, the same thing that you are doing here with uh, the font color can also be done with the background color of the uh, element that you are adding the CSS coding to. And all you have to do is use the command background color with a hyphen in between it. And then you, you do the same thing that you were doing before. You use a hex color code to specify the background color that you are uh, looking to have on this particular element. Um, now, setting a background color also helps to give you a good idea of exactly the type of space that this element is taking up. Now, as you can see, the black background color actually does not just take up the space behind the word content, but it stretches across the entire uh, length of the page, or at least the part of the page that it is contained within. Um, now what this means is that these div tags right here, these are always going to take up all of the, the, uh, the amount of width that you have on your uh, website. So if you decide that you don't want it to take up that much space, then you have to use another CSS code command called width. And you can specify the width in a percentage. You could do 50%, for example, or you could also use uh, pixels. Typically, I prefer to use pixels because it, it keeps your design set um, from uh, one computer and one browser to the next uh, using percentages when people have different screen resolution sizes. Their website uh, could end up looking completely different for one person than it could uh, for the next person. And unless you're doing quite a bit of testing to figure out how things are looking on all the different browsers and screen resolutions, um, then it's typically just easier to stick with something that you know will remain constant every time. So I'm going to set pixels here for the width of this element. Um, 
I'm going to set this as 300 pixels just so you can see exactly what this is going to do on the live site. And as you can see, it pretty much chopped it in half. Um, so this is now a much shorter area. Um, another command that you can use to further enhance this element that we have created on the page uh, is the padding command. Now, what padding does is you see uh, the edge of the element right here where the black goes and it meets the white right here. Um, the amount of space in between this location and where the content uh, will begin is the amount of padding that you have in your element. So you could set the padding at 10 pixels, for example. I'm going to preview those changes so you can see now that uh, some additional padding has been set within this element and you know it 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 helps you when it comes to designing things uh, to design uh, your web pages to be able to add some some padding into your elements because um, obviously it makes it look uh, cleaner and it makes it easier to set a background color on something um, and you can you can use this in a variety of situations. You can use it to create uh, buttons on your site, for example. You can see up here, like if you hover over a menu item, how the background color changes. This is all done with CSS coding, and by simply learning a, a fairly short list of commands, um, you can actually unleash all this uh, freedom upon yourself to to make your sites look exactly how you want them to. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is to show you uh, how to align the text that is within um, your element here. All you have to do is use the command text align and then you enter in the word center and it will center the content for you right in the middle of your element. Um, this really becomes useful when you're trying to uh, set up things in a specific design and you don't want to have to count out a number of pixels that you might you know want to space out your content you can just use simple commands like this uh, text align you can also use commands like left or right with it to align your text to a specific uh, area of the element um, going back uh, back to the padding for just one moment just to expand on this a little bit more um, if you notice the padding that I added it was added around uh, each side of the element um, with the with the content centered you don't necessarily notice that the padding exists on the left and the right hand side but it is definitely still there and being used and you can see that it is also on the top and the bottom. Well, if you decide that you only want to have padding in one particular portion of your site, the easiest way to do this that is simple to remember um, is to simply add on to your padding command, add on the, a hyphen and then simply add on uh, an additional word. So you could say padding right you could say padding top, padding bottom, padding left. Whichever one you want to do, set the padding. Here I'll set it to padding top. And as you can see, the padding on the top is still there, but the bottom, the, uh, bottom padding has now disappeared. Um, and again, this is useful when you're wanting to design uh, all the different elements of your page and arrange them in certain ways, especially when you're, when you're using coloring uh, along with your elements to try to uh, create what may appear to be an image on on your web page uh, when it's actually just completely done with CSS coding. Um, the next thing that I'm going to show you guys here is uh, let me set a different background color so you can actually notice what is going on here and uh, now I'm going to set a border. All you have to do is use the command border. Now just like I did with padding, you can also do border left, border right, border top, and 
border bottom by simply adding in a hyphen and typing in that word. Um, but I'm just going to use just simply the border command and it will add the border to all sides of my element. Now the border command actually has three different pieces to it unlike all of these other commands that I have done so far where they only have uh, one specific piece that goes along with it is in terms of a value. Now to start with you want to type in a number of pixels. This number of pixels controls how thick the border is uh, that is getting created. The next command that you're going to type in is um, going to specify what type of border is created. There are a number of different options for this. Uh, solid is the most commonly used option. This just creates one solid line that is drawn uh, to create the border. But you can also use other things like uh, dotted, for example, and it will create a dotted border around the element for you. Now the next thing that you enter in is the color of the border. And this works just like before with these uh, hex color codes and you simply specify the border color. So once again here I have set a border color. Um, this is going to create a border around my element that is going to be one pixel thick. It will be a solid uh, line border and it is going to be in this color which uh, six zeros gives me black. So you can see, and I also, uh, I changed the background color over here to a different color because it was set at black previously and you wouldn't have been able to pick up uh, the difference between the border and background color had I not changed that. So as you can see, I set the background color to a more of a gray color and the border is now a black color and the, uh, the content that is within it is still set uh, as my text color. Uh, right here. So as you can see with a fairly short list of commands you're you're already completely changing the way that this one bit of text here is displayed on your website. Um, so you can you can combine and mix and match these different commands to uh, to easily create pretty much the exact look that you're that you're going for on your site. Um, now, what I'm going to do here is to, uh, I'm going to completely duplicate what I have already done here on the site, and I'm going to uh, put in a second one so you can see what happens when I have two of them. Um, now, as you can see, they're actually stacked one on top of the next, and there is uh, absolutely zero space in between them. The border right here actually appears to be thicker than the other borders because this is actually two different borders coming together. Um, so if you wanted this to appear to be the same thickness as the rest of these borders, what you would actually want to do is to set the, the uh, bottom border on one of these elements to be zero and then set the other one to be one. And then you would just have a skinny line running through the middle here. So once you have these elements on your page, there's even more that you can do in terms of arranging the way that they are displayed. Um, if you look at the total amount of width that is being taken up by this element here, you would think that there is enough room to stack this element um, over here beside it instead of dropping it down below it. So you might be wondering exactly why it did it that way and also how you could make something show up over here next to it instead of down below it. And the way you do that is by using floats. Float is another CSS command. And one of the easiest ways to use float is to simply use the float left command. Now, I am also going to float this second element to the left. Now, you would think that, again, by floating both elements to the left-hand 
side of the page, for example, you would think that it would still end up showing up looking uh, in this manner. But what this is actually doing, it, it, is, it is floating both elements to the left, but it is doing it um, within the available area of uh, your workspace here. So you can see by floating both elements to the left, they are sitting side by side now, and they are butting completely up against one another. You can see the double thick border right here in the middle uh, that was also showing up previously on the bottom. Now, if I were to set this other element to float to the right and one of them to float to the left, what this is going to do is one element will be pushed as far left as it can go and the other one will get pushed as far right as it can go. And there may be a gap in the middle or there may not be a gap in the middle. It really just depends on how much space you have to work with and the size of the elements that you have created. Um, so as you can see, by using this one simple command, you can rearrange the way um, things are displayed on your page. So you could now create, for example, a series of buttons and have them stacked one next to the other on your page instead of running down your page. Um, going beyond this just a little bit more, um, I want to show you, uh, let me go back and change this one back to a float left. I want to show you another command called margin. Now, margin works almost in an identical manner to the padding command. You remember the padding command uh, adds in space right here in between the uh, exterior of your element and the uh, content of your element. Well, now the margin command is going to work with the outside of your element. So if you want there to be space um, to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom of your particular element, then this is how you do it, by using the margin command. Um, just to show you to begin with, because there is not a lot of uh, width left, left on this particular page that I can actually work with, I'm going to put these elements uh, to stand right one on top of the next. Um, I suppose I could back up here for a second and preview this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. They're sitting on top of one another again. Um, so now I'm going to use the margin command, but only on one of these elements so you can see exactly what this does to it. I'm adding a margin of five pixels to this. Now this is going to add the margin to all sides of the element just like with the padding command and also with the border command, I can specify a specific direction on this. If I only wanted the margin to be on the top, for example, I could do margin hyphen top and then specify the number of pixels. Um, but I'm just going to use uh, an overall uh, margin on all sides for this particular uh, preview here. Now, as you can see, this puts some space in between uh, the box above it and this box, but it has also jumped it off uh, to the right a little bit. And that's because, as you remember before, this, this margin has been applied to all sides of this element. So there's a five pixel margin over here to the left, and then there is also a five pixel margin above it. And then there is also one to the right of it and down below it, even though you can't really tell because it's not affecting the layout of anything else. Um, so once again, if you didn't want uh, this to be offset over here to the left, for example, all you would really have to do is just set the margin to only apply to the top of the element. And this would simply create a little bit of space in between the two elements right here. Um, beyond this, um, once you have um, floated two elements, I'm going to jump back once again. Sorry for uh, sorry for bouncing around a little bit here. 
once you have floated two elements, if you then continue to build additional content on your page, um, you could potentially end up with content that is displayed um, in a different way from what you were expecting. Um, let's see, there's a question here. Dennis is asking, is this a better way to enter elements than using tables? Um, yes, tables, tables can um, provide this type of uh, layout for you where you have one thing on top of the next built into columns um, or you could have things laid out you know one next to the other using tables but the main difference is that this is considered to be um, much much cleaner uh, coding uh, especially um, a lot of people have speculated that that search engines will actually prefer sites that are built with divs instead of sites that are built with tables because the the table HTML elements were not really designed to be used to create a complete you know uh, website or content designs with them they were literally just intended to be used as tables and uh, people really identified that as an easier solution to get content to line up the way that they wanted it to. And this was really uh, a number of years ago before uh, there were a lot of advancements with the CSS uh, uh, platform that really allowed people to take better control over the elements that they build on their page. Um, another, uh, you're welcome, Dennis. Another reason why you might want to use the divs instead of tables, for example, is that all of this extra coding right here, all of this CSS coding that I have put in uh, to this page, this doesn't necessarily have to be entered in here on this page. Um, all of this could actually be stored um, in a separate file somewhere else. And so you would end up with a very clean looking um, HTML layout on your page if you're loading uh, all of your CSS coding elsewhere. Um, that gets a little bit more complicated and I'm going to uh, not dive into that particular subject tonight because uh, I do have a few more things I'm going to try to cover here for you guys. Clive. Clive says losing connection a few times. Is is anybody else having any uh, connection issues? Can everybody still hear me okay and see my screen okay? Uh, or is anything uh, cutting out? Looks like I have a number of people doing good. Hey, Ralph, good to see you there. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm. I may not be the best in terms of trying to troubleshoot uh, the webinar connections here. Um, if if you have a uh, a high speed internet, uh, you should be okay. But then again, like you could have a possibly a, a slower uh, download speed um, that may not be able to keep up with both the high def uh, video and also the audio at the same time. Um, if, if you are having some connection problems, I know one option is to uh, dial in using a phone to actually listen to the audio from it, and then you can just pick up the video on your computer and the audio off of your uh, telephone, and that should help to reduce uh, the bandwidth that's actually running through your computer, which could, which could definitely help to improve your connection. Um, okay, jumping back here, guys. Um, I'm going back to floating two elements here. I'm going to uh, shrink them and make them a little bit smaller just so I have a little bit more room to work with so I can show you guys um, a couple more things here. So as you can see, I made each of these elements, elements much smaller. Uh, there are only 200 pixels now. So there's actually still some workable room over here left on the right-hand side. Now, 
if I just go down here and I start typing in uh, additional content, and I go and publish this and take a look at it, as you can see, this content is actually still um, showing up next to all of this content. And you might wonder why this is happening because I didn't, you know, I didn't include this text right here in any elements. I didn't put any width to them. I didn't float them or anything like that. It's just, it's just simply freestanding text. Um, and the reason why is that once you have applied a float to an element here, you're actually changing the way that HTML uh, lines up all of the content in your pages. I'm trying not to go into too much of the technical aspects of it here and just trying to explain all this in, in the easiest way possible. Um, so the the best way that I can that I can explain this to people that may not be familiar with with the jargon is to simply say that uh, once you have floated an element instead of stacking everything on top of one another, you are then lining everything up uh, width ways. Now when you're using an element like a div that's going to take up all of the available space on your page, unless you have given it a width, um, something like this that is just text that is standing alone on your page, uh, it is not typically taking up all of the available width on the page, so it is simply falling in line here with everything else. Now, in some cases, this can actually be really useful. Um, you can, for example, put uh, an image inside of an element, and then you can have text on the outside of it, and you can be floating the image to the left so you could then be displaying an image and then you can have content out beside the image instead of showing everything on top of each other. Um, but then if you want the content that is right here uh, to not stick on to the end of this content and you actually want it to start taking up a new line by itself, all you have to do is to clear out your floats. Now to clear your floats, all you have to do is to use the clear command. Now I'm going to create another new div element and to put a style on it. And all it is going to say is clear and both. You can actually clear only one float at a time. You can clear left or you could clear right. But unless you're getting into some type of complicated design, uh, nine times out of ten, you are just going to looking be looking to clear both. And what this is going to do is this is going to make the web page think that essentially none of this code ever existed, and it will simply display this content how it was supposed to be um, on on a completely new line by itself, as if everything else wasn't there. And this div element that I created right here, as you can see, there's actually nothing inside of it. Uh, there doesn't have to be anything inside of it. It's not going to take up any space on your page. Um, and then I just close it off with a closing tag right here. When I preview this, as you can see, it bumps this content down below uh, these elements that I have created on the page here. Um, so this is how you can use these floats along with the elements and the sizes. Uh, just like the width, you can also specify a height if you would like to. Um, but height and, and width work out a little different when it comes to CSS coding. Um, whatever amount of content you pack in to this element right here, it will continue to stretch vertically to provide um, enough room to take up all of the space there. So the only time that you'll really need to use the height command is when you want elements to have a specific height and to never go over that height or else it you know, might make uh, the overall arrangement and layout of everything else that you've built end up looking uh, messed up. Um, 
one of the last things that I'm going to show you here, um, at least with HTML coding and CSS coding, uh, is one more command, and this is called the font variant command. Now, one of the most favorite things that I like to use the font variant command for is for small caps. Small caps are where all of the letters uh, in the content are all capital letters, but only the capitalized letters in your content will be larger capital letters and the rest of the letters will be smaller capital letters. As you can see, I've previewed the changes here and just this one minor little modification really makes it um, stand out and, and makes it completely different from the other content that is on your page. And you could accomplish this look uh, by simply setting a custom size on this text and then again a separate size on this text and making it all capital letters, um, but this is a much easier way and faster way that you can uh, accomplish this. Um, moving on, I've got about 15 minutes or so left here that I'm going to uh, try to cover one more thing for you guys. I um, actually want to give you a quick little crash course on uh, PHP programming and especially how you can use PHP programming uh, in combination with a WordPress site. So what I uh, will always do if I want to use PHP coding on a WordPress site is I go and install this plugin called exec PHP. Uh, it's a completely free plugin. Just search for it within WordPress like I was showing you here. Activate it on your site and there's really nothing else more that you need to do in terms of uh, configuring this plugin to work. Um, so now I'm going to uh, I'm going to save this draft here real quick so this page can uh, refresh so it will properly process the, the PHP coding for me here. Um, by adding this plugin into my WordPress site, this actually allows me to now use PHP coding within the content of my WordPress pages. Typically, if you had tried to enter in some PHP coding right here, it would simply be printed out on your live web page exactly as you typed it in. Uh, it's not actually processed through your WordPress content normally. But by adding in this plugin, um, you now have the freedom to use PHP coding here. And once again, just like the HTML and the CSS coding, you want to make sure that this is always done within the text tab of WordPress. Uh, if you put it in the visual tab, it will just simply spit it out on your web page, just how you type it in. Um, to begin with, I just want to show you a couple of PHP basics um, because many of you may have never used uh, or even tried PHP programming before. It can be intimidating um, just trying to think about trying to wrap your head around it all, but really the key to PHP programming is not to be able to know everything but it's just to learn one simple command at a time and to learn how to use those commands um, in a useful way on your websites. So what I have started out and put on the page here uh, is an opening and a closing bracket for PHP coding. If you picked out the exact plugin that I recommended, recommended the uh, exec PHP uh, plugin, then this is the specific format that it is looking for on your pages to process PHP coding. Now there are other plugins out there uh, for WordPress that you can find uh, by searching um, that may use a different format from the one that you see here. But personally, I like to use this particular plugin because this uh, PHP tag format right here 
is the real PHP tag format. If you have a PHP script, you can simply copy that code and paste it into your WordPress site and it will work using this plugin, um, assuming everything else that that script needs is, is properly set up. So to use PHP coding, all you have to do to begin with is to type in your opening tag. This is a less than symbol and then a question mark and followed by the word PHP with no spaces in there at all. Uh, the closing tag is simply a question mark and a greater than symbol. Um, and then anything that is in between these two tags will be your PHP coding. So whatever, um, whatever you know, uh, actions you are looking to have taken uh, by, by putting this PHP code on your site, it's all going to take place in between these two tags. You don't ever want to try to use a PHP command outside of these tags because it will simply be uh, displayed on your live website and not actually processed. And this, this same thing applies if you build uh, PHP uh, files um, outside of WordPress as well. So um, any, any of this information that I'm providing about PHP is not limited to WordPress. And that also applies for any of this uh, HTML and CSS information that I was giving you guys a little earlier. Um, I want to show you a, a couple of basic PHP commands that are some of the most commonly used, and but they also give you a, a, um, an ability to use them in a wide variety of ways to accomplish different things. Um, I'm going to start by showing you a variable. A variable um, is one of the most essential parts of PHP and pretty much any programming language for that matter because a variable stores information, but it is only storing information temporarily um, during this one visit to the page. So to create a variable uh, with PHP, you use a dollar sign. And after the dollar sign, you are using a name uh, for that variable. Now this name that you create can really be anything that you want it to be. The only thing you have to be careful about is that the name doesn't conflict with another variable that is already being used on the site. There are different practices as far as how you can try to avoid doing this, but um, for, for basic usage and for most situations, you're not going to run into those types of problems. Um, so I really won't spend the time going into that. I could probably talk about that stuff for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do is simply to call this variable uh, a var, V-A-R. This is the name that I have given to my variable. Um, and all you do is to put an equal sign after your variable and then you can declare the variable uh, by setting it to any value that you want it to hold. The value that you want it to hold could be a number, for example. It could be the number 10. And then I close it off here. Um, I could create another variable. And I could set this one to be some type of text. Now, when you set text, as uh, the value for a variable, you want to enclose that text in quotation marks. This can actually be done with the single quotation marks or with the double quotation marks. It really doesn't uh, make a difference. Both of these will actually end up being the exact same thing, even though they look slightly different. So. The point of using variables is that um, at the beginning of your page, for example, you could set a variable, um, give it a particular value, and then stuff could take place uh, through the coding of your page that may actually change the value of that variable 
and then you may want something different to happen on your live website that is dependent upon the value of the variable. So this may sound a little confusing to start out with, but I'm going to show you exactly how this works. I'm going to start off by creating a variable called A. I'm going to set A to be equal to 1. Now, what I'm going to do is to uh, create a little bit of basic content on uh, this page. Um, I will go ahead and leave the rest of this HTML coding down there, just so you guys can see that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and create some new content here. And what I am doing here is actually creating a way uh, that people can interact with this web page without actually leaving the web page. And this allows me to have control over what is going on and what people are seeing when they visit this page. Um, and it, it makes it um, a lot more useful when people can interact with your pages or when you can perhaps limit the information that they're being shown to just the information that they're looking for so they don't have to sort uh, through everything else. Um, and this is one example of a way that you can do this. What I'm doing here is um, I'm actually creating a, uh, a link and I'm going to call this test link number two. Now as you can see here uh, in the URL for this link, um, I put a question mark and then I put the letter A and then I put an equal sign and then I put the number two. Now what this actually means is that when somebody clicks on this text link here, they're going to be redirected back to this same page on my website um, but this variable is going to be set on my website. Just to show you how this works, I'm going to duplicate this link again. So I will have a test link number one and a test link number two. Now, going back up to the top here, I have set uh, the variable A. I have also set this up at the top. But there's a big difference here. When people click on one of these links and they are redirected back to my page with this new variable set, it is not set in the same manner that this is set. Um, this variable can still exist while still having this variable exist. And that's because the link variable here that is uh, added into the URL is actually being set um, globally for this page as a global vari variable instead of a local variable. And when it is added into the URL of a link right here, um, you use the variable get, all in capitals, G-E-T, with an underscore uh, right in front of the word get. And then the actual variable name that you are using in your URL down here uh, goes right up here. You have to set an open and a closing um, as well as quotation marks around the variable name. And this represents the variable that is uh, in your URL here. So what I could do is set um, another variable, I'll call this temp, tempe, uh, and this will be my URL variable will be set as tempe. So what I want to do is uh, I'm basically looking to, uh, in this example, I'm going to show content based on the uh, variable that is set uh, for this web page. And how I do that is by using uh, an if statement and a combination of an if else statement. The if statement is pretty simple. You simply use the word if and then you use parentheses and everything within the parentheses is going to be what you are testing. 
So let's say I am testing the variable A. If I want the variable, um, if I want to be doing something specific when the variable has a specific value, I put two equal symbols right here. And then I put the value that I am looking for. So right here, this if statement says if the variable name A is equal to a value of 1, then I want the following to happen. And the way you specify what is happening is you close and close this in brackets right here. So any code that you place in between these two brackets right here is going to get executed uh, whenever this condition is met. Now, instead of creating a whole bunch of these conditions right here, if you only have, say, two possible um, results that it could possibly be, you might say, want to say, instead of creating two separate ones, I want to combine them into uh, one statement. And you do that by using the else statement in combination with an if statement. Uh, all you have to do is add on the else right next to the closing bracket, and then you add on another opening bracket, and then you close off the bracket again. Every bracket that you open must have a matching closing bracket to go with it, or else you'll end up with a syntax error when you try to run that page. So what this is going to do is any code that is right here will get executed when A is equal to 1. And right here, this code will get executed anytime A is anything except for 1. Um, running back up to the top here, as you may have noticed, I only have A set to 1. Uh, whereas I have set this special URL variable right here as temp A. So what I want to do is to test uh, temp A, actually. I'm going to say if temp A is greater than 0, then I want A to be set to the value of temp A. Now, as you can see, I did not use an opening and a closing bracket on this if statement like I did on this one. The reason why is that I only have one command of code that I want to execute when this statement is true. So if you're not using a bracket, the very next statement of code will get executed if this is true, otherwise, this line of code right here is completely ignored. So if temp a, my variable temp a, which is my URL variable down here, if this is set to any value above zero, which would indicate that somebody has clicked on one of these two links on my page, then I'm going to set the value of a as temp a. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is this, this provo provides a, uh, a default value for um, your page. Obviously, if somebody immediately visited your page, you might want to show them one thing. Whereas, um, you know, in, instead of just showing them a completely blank page and waiting on them to provide some type of response, uh, by clicking maybe one of a couple of links that you have on there. Um, so this would show a specific uh, line of code or amount of information that happens when either the test link number one has been clicked or if somebody has simply visited this page without clicking on any of these links. And then this code would get run uh, if somebody clicks on the second link down here. So just to show you here, uh, another uh, command that you can use, and one of the most common commands that is used, is the echo command. The echo command allows you to print out information uh, to the visitor as if it were basically HTML coding. Now, you could simply stop your PHP coding, for example, 
um, and then place your HTML coding and then restart your PHP coding. But a lot of times, if you just want to output a, a small amount of information, it's actually uh, often simpler and easier to simply use the echo command. So the echo command really works in the same manner as uh, setting a variable. You are either echoing a variable or a number or a string or any combination of those things uh, to your website visitor. And you want to be sure that uh, everything is enclosed in quotation marks that you want to echo. So if A is equal to 1, I want to uh, tell people that my variable A is equal to 1. Pretty straightforward. Obviously, there wouldn't really be much of a, a real world use for something like this. But this, um, this same type of scenario, this testing variables and displaying information for one particular case and different information for another case, this is really the, uh, the heart of using PHP programming and often uh, how it is used. Now, as you can see up here, I uh, actually have the variable A uh, within the quotation marks of this echo command. Um, this is actually not the correct way to do it. What I actually want to do is to remove the variable from these quotes. And I do this by stringing uh, all of these commands along together. This is essentially now turned into three separate echo commands. I am echoing this piece. Uh, this period connects the pieces together. So then I'm going to echo this piece, and then I am going to echo this piece. And the reason why I do this is because this ensures that the actual variable um, will print out its value uh, on the page. So just to make sure that this actually reads correct, I'm going to change this around slightly. So you can see here, this says variable A is equal to, and now it's actually going to print out the value of my variable right here. Now once again, uh, there are two conditions. You also have a second condition down here where you could print out pretty much the same thing, but then obviously the main point of this is to be able to print out something completely different. Um, so what I'm going to do is to make a minor modification to one of these. Um, so there is obviously a difference between the two uh, bits of coding that are getting executed here. So variable A is equal to, and then is going to print out the actual number. Um, but I am also going to say uh, or the variable has not yet been set. And this would indicate that I may be seeing this message if I haven't clicked on a link or if I clicked on one of these links. So this is a, a pretty basic example once again, but this same technique can be applied to many different situations uh, to be able to customize the way content is displayed on your site based on something happening. Um, and you can build a wide variety of um, different ways that, that this can actually be used. So to show you how all this works in person, uh, I'm going to now visit the page. As you can see here, when I first visit the page, I am shown the text variable A is equal to 1 or the variable has not yet been set because I haven't clicked on either of the links. 
So now, if I hover over the link, uh, if you can see all the way down in the far bottom left-hand corner of my page, where it says downcomforterguide.com forward slash A is equal to 1. You can see where uh, this additional variable that I have set in these links is actually displayed. You can see hovering over this one, it says A is equal to 1, and hovering over this one, it says A is equal to 2. Um, if I click on link, I'm previewing this page here, so this isn't going to work correctly. Um, when you're using PHP coding, dealing with the additional variables on the end here, um, you cannot actually uh, just preview these pages because it directs you back to the main page of the site. Um, so I'm going to save this page here, and then I will actually go and view the page and show you this again. So now you can see when I click on the link down in the bottom left hand corner again the uh, the URL has been changed to actually reflect uh, for this specific page so when I click on the first link you can see that the URL has been added up here but obviously nothing has changed on my page because of the coding that I have in place this message will be shown whether nothing has been clicked or whether the first link has been clicked Obviously, this is something that you know can be changed around. I'm just trying to show a little bit of a variety all, all packed into one here to show you as many potential uses as possible for this. So when you click on link number two, you can see that the uh, text here is now changed. It is only showing variable A is equal to two. And this is the second bit of coding that I have down here in my if-else statement. So in the first situation, this code was getting executed, and now this code is getting executed. And by, by creating a combination of uh, tests and links within your content, and you can even get a little bit more complex beyond that, and actually uh, create HTML forms and then test for the information that people enter into those forms in this same manner. Um, all of this is done with PHP and it's really only using a fairly short list of uh, commands, but they can, they can do uh, quite a few different things um, when applied to a live website. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything that I have gone over uh, so far tonight? I uh, don't mind taking a, a few questions. I know I'm a little over my original uh, time that I set to wrap all this up here, but honestly, I don't really mind running over if, if uh, you know, you guys are are picking up some good information here. Yes, I am recording, Harold. Um, I will be uh, uploading this uh, recording of, of tonight's webinar, um, and anybody that attended the webinar or even anybody that registered for the webinar and didn't show up, um, you'll be able to, to watch a replay of this uh, afterwards. I, I should hopefully have that up um, no later than this time tomorrow, I would. I would guess. Sometimes those files can take a little while to get processed. Uh, you're welcome, Harold. Um, so that's pretty much everything that I had. Um, the the replay. Uh, you're welcome, Clive. Uh, George and James. The uh, the replay. You will be sent a uh, a link to it uh, from GoToWebinar pretty much just like the uh, reminder email that you received an hour before this webinar began. Um, you'll get another automated email like that, uh, which will provide you with a link in it that you can then go and uh, watch it. Are you talking about this warning right here, this exec PHP conversion warning? Um, Honestly, 
I've been using this plugin, Exec PHP, for it, at least three or four years, and I have I have honestly never quite figured out why this is uh, displayed up here. You can you can continue to edit these pages over and over again. You can continually change your coding. Uh, saving the page definitely does not render all of the PHP coding permanently unuseful. Um, I'm I'm honestly not quite sure why that message has always showed up up top there. Um, to be to be entirely honest with you, um, my best guess is that it could be old from. Uh, an older version of WordPress um, where uh, it was it was doing more within the uh, the content of your page it actually used to modify it uh, directly more so that now when it's modifying it it's doing it as it's being uh, output on your web page instead of directly so I'm that would be my best guess as to why that particular warning shows up there um, I'll still be around for a few more minutes if you guys have any more questions. Uh, you're welcome, Don. I'm glad it was helpful information for you. Um, over the course of the month of July, um, I'm actually going to be running five more of these uh, Techie Masterclass sessions. Um, the the sessions that I'm running in July will actually be twice as long as this one. They're going to be planned for two hours apiece, so it's going to be a total of uh, 10 hours worth of additional um, technology and WordPress and web design training uh, that I'm going to be offering for you guys. Um, I would like to invite all of you guys that are interested in learning more uh, about web design and about uh, using PHP, HTML, and CSS, um, and and even even to learn about uh, website hosting and management, um, things like uh, cPanel and using FTP and databases. Um, all of this information I find is extremely essential uh, to to be able to not be controlled by I guess the products that are that are out there and creating your websites for you um, when you can actually take control over um, over your websites and over the content that you're creating on your sites then um, you can really expand your horizons and create more useful websites for people um, even start doing work for other people where you're actually getting paid for technical work. Um, and even if you have no plans on moving on to try to do something uh, where this type of knowledge might seem like it would come really in handy, if all you're ever doing is creating websites for yourself, this type of knowledge is still extremely uh, valuable. Um, because it can save you a ton of money when it comes to uh, outsourcing, paying other people how to do these simple tasks for you. Uh, for example, if your website breaks and you're not quite sure what to do, you know, you have to run out there, find some programmer that you really don't even know, and then you have to give them access to your website and let them dig through everything. And you have to trust them to tell you what the problem is and how long it takes them to fix it and to you know properly bill you for all that. If you don't have uh, the knowledge that all of that is centered around, it's it's really easy uh, to get ripped off in that manner. Um, and for this reason alone, this is actually why I have decided to put together. Um, this techie masterclass session for you guys and and also just why I decided to uh, run this free webinar tonight for you um, because even if you you don't decide to join me for the rest of these techie masterclass sessions um, just the information that I provided tonight you can take to uh, your WordPress websites and and really change them around a little bit and make them look uh, 
different make some of your your uh, your featured content on particular pages you know stand out more make some of your advertising stand out more or you know maybe just even get creative with the way that you're displaying uh, information you can create you know uh, customized comparison charts for example uh, using these types of techniques that I covered tonight. Um, once again, I welcome questions that anybody has. Uh, if you would like to join me for this additional 10 hours of techie training, um, either visit the uh, URL that you see on the page, or I have also uh, punched it in to the chat box here for you, uh, so you can just click on it if you would prefer. Um, I have a special deal going uh, that is actually going to be ending at midnight tonight. Um, it's a little over two and a half hours away from now. Um, after midnight tonight, the price on this is going to jump up $50. And then um, on July 1st, it's going to be jumping up another $50. And the, the first of these training sessions is actually on the evening of July the 1st, uh, starting at 7 p.m. So, you know, obviously you would want to be uh, joining this before that time so you can make sure that you don't miss any of these training classes. Um, to go along with these five training sessions, they will, um, they're, they're all going to be run from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. It is uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, it was basically one hour earlier than tonight's webinar began. Um, all five of those webinars will be recorded, so if for some reason you can't attend uh, any one of the live uh, viewings, you will also get uh, permanent access to, to replays for all of those. Um, Kath Kathleen, no, I... I do not have a a payment plan available, but I know that I know that PayPal has recently um, set up a, a, some type of payment plan system on their side. Um, the payments do go through PayPal, so if if you can use the uh, the bill me later feature um, that they've recently started doing on their site, then uh, that that is something that you can uh, take advantage of in combination with this. Uh, you're, you're welcome, Kathleen. Feel free to let me know if you have any other questions. If anybody has any uh, additional questions for me, um, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, stick around for at least a couple more minutes just to make sure nobody has anything that they would like to, to ask. Um, anything about anything that I covered tonight, or even anything about uh, these upcoming uh, Techie Masterclass sessions that I will be holding. Mm, one last thing that I forgot to mention before. Um, these five upcoming courses, they will not only be uh, two-hour-long courses where you will get... Um, recordings of the courses, but I'm also uh, putting together a, uh, an ebook guide that will be going along with each of the courses. So the, uh, the day that the uh, course begins, you'll actually receive um, an ebook from me that is going to be a guidebook that you can use to go along with uh, the webinar because the webinar will be in a format uh, really just like tonight, all like, you know, pure content. I'm going to be actually pulling up uh, live web pages and doing all this stuff for you guys in person. Um, so I, I feel like the ebook guides that I'm putting together for them will help you to follow along with uh, the training that I'm offering as it is going. Um, but then not only that, but it will give you a, an easy reference that you can use after the fact to go back to and just to refresh um, some of the information that I have that I have covered. Um, what do you think we'll be able to do practically after the techie training? Um, 
the the information that I'm going to be covering in that training, uh, it is it is geared towards helping you to uh, run your own websites um, and to do custom uh, web design work on them. If you're if you're thinking in terms of what you'll be able to do um, as as perhaps a, an outsourced uh, employee for other people doing technical work for them, um, it it could really uh, vary depending on how how I don't know you grasp the uh, the concepts that are offered in the in the training material. Um, just just like tonight, where I was offering uh, specific examples um, of things that I that I was teaching, uh, I will be doing the same uh, throughout the rest of this training series. Um, so in that regard, you you will be able to uh, do a wide variety of uh, website management type of stuff using control panel using FTP to uh, manage files, remove files from sites, uh, upload new files to sites, for example, um, use databases, um, install WordPress, um, and, then, and then when it gets into the HTML and the CSS side of it, I'm going to try to be teaching a lot of the basics in terms of some of the most common uh, commands and tags that people will use on their websites to uh, to change the way that they look and to provide a, a customized uh, design for it. But then I'm also going to be teaching a little bit of of the technical aspects of it as well in terms of um, syntax and actually how. Uh, to use uh, this type of stuff in different situations. Um, for example, for example, before, yeah, I didn't see a 99 secret special offer when I clicked away from the page. Will, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't do that type type of stuff. Will, I, um, I, I honestly, I honestly hate uh, offers where. You're you're viewing it and it shows you one thing and then you close the page and then it says wait before you go take a look at this and I'm gonna offer you the same exact thing for a lower price even though I wouldn't have had a problem selling it to you at that price to begin with and it's it's all it's marketing tactics designed to instill a sense of urgency to buy and and to I don't know. It's 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 a little it's a little too pushy for my taste. So I don't I don't use uh I don't use pop up uh, exit offers and and things of that nature. Um, the price the price is what it is, and uh, when the timer on that page runs out, uh, it'll be it'll be gone forever uh, for that price. Uh, tomorrow it'll be fifty dollars higher and fifty dollars higher the day after that. Uh, thank you very much, Clive. I, I look forward to uh, seeing you there. Um, feel free to uh, think of some specific, uh, if, if, if there's something particular that you are looking to learn out of this uh, tutorial session. Obviously, this is not um, something that I'm creating ahead of time, um, so I, I don't mind actually um, you know, trying to cover specific topics for some of you guys that are attending if there is um, uh, something particular that you are looking to learn. Um, anybody that does join up with it, um, I will be contacting you personally by email to send you your, your registration links. Um, and, and when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and ask you some uh, questions and, you know, feel free to respond and let me know if there is anything particular that you are looking to learn. Um, no, Will, uh, there, there are not additional costs uh, or tools. Um, I'm trying to think through any, 
any type of software that I that I may use um, on on my WordPress sites and and dealing with uh, these custom um, you know coding and and things of that nature. I really I really don't uh, use other software to do that stuff for me. Um, I kind of learned how to do it all from scratch, and um, while I'm in my 30s now and married with three children, I got started uh, with building websites when I was like 13 years old and lived in my parents' house, so I, I learned to do it all uh, with a minimalistic type of approach um, where I literally did not have a penny to spend to do uh, any of this type of stuff. If you already have a uh, a web host account set up and you already have a domain name running, um, you can do absolutely everything that I will teach you in my uh, in my techie training uh, without spending an additional penny. the the only The only piece of software that I use that I will briefly brush upon um, will be an FTP software that I use to upload uh, files to my sites. However, there are there are definitely uh, free FTP software uh, out there that you can download. So even that is not something that is that is a requirement. And um, I'll, I'll be sure to do some research and make sure um, I have a, a free option uh, to present for that type of stuff. Let's see, I'm checking through. I got a couple more questions here. Can I add in a before training example and an after training concise video upon completion? Are you talking about um in the in the upcoming uh lessons or are you referring to like in the in the ebook uh guide that I'll be providing with each of those? Um, I, I will, I will go into talking about widgets, uh, with that and, and ways that you can use, um, custom coding, uh, with widgets. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so I will, I'll definitely provide some examples, um, probably in, in like the ebook guide, I'm thinking, uh, s stuff that you guys can actually like copy and paste to your own website uh, just to try it out for yourself, for example, um, to make learning it a little bit easy, um, which is really the, the way that I recommend for people to learn this type of thing. Um, if you find it to be a little overwhelming, don't try to focus on the big picture of needing to learn everything all at once. I I did not, I, I went to college for computer animation, but I did not take any computer classes having anything to do with, with programming or web design or anything like that. I have simply learned one command at a time uh, over, over the years and put it all together. Um, and honestly, I was doing all this um, on my own, so I was having to go out there and research every single bit of information that I wanted to learn, and it was all done out of a desire to to avoid paying somebody else to do it. Because, um, as I mentioned before, I was I was a teenager when I first got started building websites, and uh, you know, I wanted I wanted something special done about the way it looks and um I just I just didn't want to keep shelling out the money over and over and over again. Um Let's see. Kathleen is asking, do you need a good deal of experience to get a lot out of this class? I 
I don't uh I don't believe that you will, Kathleen. Um the whole the whole class is kind of designed more from a uh beginner's perspective and somebody that does not have pre existing um technical knowledge. I am going to try to um instead of just you know, giving one example after the next and saying this does that. I'm I will actually be going through and and explaining what things do so you can actually learn the the concepts around it all um, instead of just learning, for example, a, a series of commands that will do specific things. And and the intended purpose of that is to so you cannot obviously just learn a limited amount of information, but hopefully after the end of of uh, this additional training, you should possess the information that you would need to then go out and research new topics having to deal with HTML, CSS, or PHP, and to you know learn new commands beyond that point. Um, on your own to to be able to accomplish whatever whatever needs. If you don't mind, uh, Harold, just send me a send me a message on my uh, support system. Um, I'm not around the the Warrior Forum on a on a daily basis. It kind of just depends on what's going on at at a, a given moment. But there are sometimes weeks where I may not log into the Warrior Forum at all. And uh, let me punch that in for you. There you go. Uh, Put that in the chat box there for you. Does uh, anybody else have uh, questions for me that they would like to ask before I uh, before I close this down and call it a night? See, Will is asking, I take it, you, take it you are teaching what you consider to be the fundamentals, the best stuff for the first-time learners. Is this aimed at practical applications? Yes, um, those, are, those are really the two primary things that I will be uh, looking to focus on, Will, is um, number one, I, I want this to be something that... Uh, somebody with no experience could uh, come in and learn how to do but then I I also want the information that they're learning to actually be um, you know practical information and, and examples that they can use uh, on their websites um, a lot of the HTML and CSS examples that I do um, during the training will actually be uh, real-world examples that I'm using uh, in specific situations on various websites of mine, and uh, a, a lot of that, a lot of that coding, you guys will actually get um, in the uh, ebook guide too. So there, there will be some uh, parts of it that you could simply co copy and paste, change around a few different parts of it to get it to work exactly how you want it to, and then you know simply reuse them. Uh, on your own pages, for example. So yes, it will it will definitely be aimed at uh, practical applications for all of this information. More or less a a ten hour super crash course on on everything that you really need to know to be able to run a website and and to also build a website that's, you know, using some kind of customized uh, design on it. And also to maintain websites, um, I have one entire uh, session of this upcoming training is actually going to be 
just on how to troubleshoot problems uh, with your websites because nine times out of ten, you know, a lot of people can get through the building uh, of the websites okay, but then when something, maybe they add new software to their site and something goes wrong, a lot of times that's where people run into a, a huge roadblock and just simply can't get past it without having to hire somebody. So I'm actually going to teach you guys how to uh, figure out what those problems are and, and, and actually what's causing them and show you some easy ways that you can uh, fix them. Do I cover backing up websites? Um, I, I will definitely put that on my list of uh, things to cover well. Um, I do not believe that I had initially had that planned. I don't believe I, I had that on my original list, but uh, but now that you mention it, that is definitely uh, very important. Um, one simple little thing goes wrong with a website and you can lose all that hard work, so backing up sites on a regular basis is something that I find to be important. Um, there, there are some people out there that uh, use WordPress plugins, for example, to automate uh, backing up their sites for them. Um, but, but again, you know, I I definitely do not want uh, to be telling you guys you need to go out and purchase uh, some kind of additional software to be able to do um, things that I'm going to teach you. So I will definitely be sure to cover that point. My email is, is ryan at ryanstevensonplugins.com. Uh, it's the best email to reach me at. I have, I have a lot of different websites and, and a lot of different email accounts, um, but that is one that I am always checking on a daily basis. You guys have any other questions for me uh, before I call it a night? Anything on anything I covered already tonight or, or even anything on uh, the upcoming training that I have to offer you guys? George says, thank you for the straight talk. You're, you're quite welcome, George. Um, I definitely try to shoot things uh, shoot things straight <laughs> there's there's a lot of um, a lot of games and secrecy and stuff that floating around the the marketing world and uh, it's it's hard enough just trying to figure it all out uh, without having to figure out who's who's you know being honest with you and who isn't um, so that's always always one thing that I try to focus on doing. Uh, well, here, here let me uh, let me type this into the chat box for you instead. Will my email address? You're quite welcome, Harold. Uh, I'll be sure to check that for you and get back to you as quick as I can. Anybody else have questions? Uh, I'll wait another another minute or two and and uh and then call it a night. I appreciate all you guys uh, coming out tonight and listening to what I have to say. And uh, hopefully you picked up some valuable information from it and, and can uh, go and apply it to your own websites.
You're welcome, Will. Uh, you're welcome also, Harold. Thank you again, and uh, talk to you again soon. Any more questions before I take off, guys? Is everybody uh, everybody good and got everything asked they'd like to ask? Once again, thank you for your time and for showing up. And uh, if you if you guys need anything, if you if you're uh, sitting around and you think of a question in uh, just a little while and you'd like to ask me something, feel free to uh, send me a message through my support ticket system uh, or even to my email there, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks again. I hope you guys have a great night. And uh, this will not be uh, the last of these freebie webinars for you guys. I'm going to try to keep them coming for you and uh, keep teaching you guys everything that I have to, to offer to you. Um, hope you have a good night and talk to you later.